What's up, everybody, and welcome to Real Time for the Real Everyday Movie Fan. I'm Josh Williams. And I'm Ryan Murphy. And today we're giving you our real-time review of Beauty and the Beast. Yes, Beauty and the Beast is directed by Bill Condon, and it stars Emma Watson, Dan Stevens, Ewan McGregor, Emma Thompson, Ian McKellen, uh, Luke Evans, Josh Gad, Gugu Mbatha-Ra, Audra McDonald, uh, Kevin Klein, Stanley Tucci, uh, this movie's got a great cast. It's got a big cast. And yes, it's got a big cast. It's got a great cast. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing anyone, but that's basically, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, so is it Condom or Condon? Oh, gosh. You had to go, <laughs> you had to go there. Um, Condon, yeah. Bill Condon, of course, who's, who's known for musicals. He also, I mean, he he, dir- he directed Dreamgirls. He's, I think he's been involved in Broadway before. He's uh, also directed The Twilight Saga, Breaking Down, Parts 1 and 2. So he's got experience in both. both. Uh, but he also kind of, did do recently Mr. Holmes, which, which was, had Mia McKellen, which was an amazing film. He's done about a million films with Ian McKellen. Yeah. So um, so I'll go ahead right away. What did you think of this movie, Josh? Your score out of 10. It, uh, it gave me what I wanted. There, are other, there's This is not a perfect movie, uh, but I still really liked it. I still felt the magic. I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Um Let's just jump into what I liked about it. I'll, we'll go into what I didn't like at the end. I f- still felt the magic. I really did, especially towards the end and a little bit in the middle as well. Uh, Emma Watson, everyone's going around. So there's some people on the, on the you know, on, on, that. on the net that are saying she's miscasted. I don't think so, honestly. I still feel like they, they gave her a little more of a strong character, and she portrayed that very well. Now, were there a couple spots where her, her acting could have been better? As far as reacting to certain things, yes, like it definitely could have. Could have been better. As well I actually been. liked her singing. Uh, you didn't. Okay, we're gonna get. We'll to that. get that. We'll get to me. Um, this is your. Other time. than that, the songs were still great. I still felt. I was still laughing and you know tearing up, and still feeling like uh, still feeling the magic like I did when I was a kid watching the animated movie, or even then watching it now, and also um, the CG and the like. This whole cinematography of the film was fantastic. The whole, the all the visuals except for a couple of spots with the beast. Everything else was pre- pretty well perfect. The castle was gorgeous, and almost every scene with the castle was completely gorgeous. And the one big problem I had with was with the um with like Lumiere and Cogsworth, with all the um the servants, their CG was really good. Like I, I even liked the little. That's look. the problem you had. No, before I had I had. Concerns of like how oh, okay. the CG okay. was. I gotcha. Like, and if I would even like the look of them in the film, and in the film within the confines of the film, it works great, and they looked fantastic. <sighs> I tip of the hat for that problem. But the Beast did have a couple spots where you could really tell the motion capture was there, and like the the the, the CG was not great. But there was also certain spots, close ups, where it was really well done. But I'll, I'll have a couple other things. We'll kind of go off of each other. Let's jump into you real quick. Your score. I'm, I'm going to probably also give it an eight out of ten. I'm going to say this film was well done. You know, Emma Watson, it, she was perfect for the role in terms of just the way people saw her. Like when you heard it, it was like, oh yeah, that should be great. But she also, I mean, we're talking. You can't come help but compare this to the original film. So she doesn't really seem like the Paige O'Hara played character in the original and stuff like that. But she did fine. She did good. I really. She's very. She's beautiful. She fulfills the beauty part of the Beast. And uh, and uh, Dan Stevens was. A perfect casting for the beast. Great way. He actually out, did a great, great job way to outbreak singing. for him. Yes. Um The the wor- the magic was all there, but ironically, the the weakest part of the film was the musical numbers. You think I so? feel like I feel like no one's this movie's making a lot of money, but I feel like I don't I haven't researched this at all, but I just feel like no one's really going to be buying the soundtrack because hmm. I feel like it just leaves you thinking about how much better the original songs were. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of people trying to trying to do songs that are already famous and then trying to do them with actors that aren't really called like Emma Emma when Emma Thompson sings Beauty and the Beast it's not like it's it's got nothing on Angela Lansbury there it's and it's just like I don't know. I didn't care he for that. I didn't care for Emma in. Watson's singing. Uh, the Dan Stevens did. I mean, he was the best singer in the whole movie. Luke Evans didn't. I mean, they're casting these actors. <laughs> and I, Gaston didn't really have. And didn't do anything for me. Ewan McGregor is great. Like he's As very funny. He's, he's, he's very funny. he's very funny as Lumiere. But when he has to sing, when he sings, be oh, our guest, it leaves oh, you it, about, oh, it yeah, leaves sorry. you wanting for Jerry Orbach's original version of the song. So. I mean, that was my big thing is like, okay, musical numbers, whatever. The rest of it's great, though. You know, it's like it's all very colorful, and you get the magic and the romance and the One of the other quick Stockholm things like, syndrome. Well, Luke Evans, yeah, I felt like Luke Evans didn't capture, at least I actually blame Bill Condon for this one because okay. you're, you, his role is to help. Like, they, the actors develop the characters with what they get. 
But I feel like what Luke Evans was given is not the real character of Gaston because how he is in the in the animated film was not conveyed well in this one. He actually felt more like a puppy dog chasing after Belle than something that's like, you're going to be mine whether <laughs> you like it or not. And you know what I mean? That, that's that arrogant prick. That it, it wasn't conveyed well enough for me as far as uh, but as far as Luke Evans playing Gaston was really he did I actually think he did a great job. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things I want to bring up that I liked was the the like the kind of bromance between LeFou and Gaston in this movie, mm -hmm. and then also Ian McGregor's um, uh, Lumiere and Ian McKellen's Cogburn. Their banter like as far as them separately, yeah. like when they're bantering between one another. It is just so funny. I found myself giggling a lot. Well, that's, sort of, that's sort of the controversy too of the film is that they've kind of the director came out and said like LeFou wants Gaston in this film. And, so uh, and you like, can actually, actually, but that's like kind of like, <laughs> like in the, okay in the animated film, it's almost he, he like they're kind of already. The it's thing, like yeah. who does that? To yeah, this right. Thing. Um, but no, like but just their their whole banter between other and how they, like the chemistry was just there for both of them. Even yeah. the, even with uh, Cogsworth and uh, E. McGregor and E. McKellen. Right, like they, you can feel the chemistry there with their voice, and it just, I loved it. It was just mm. so funny to listen to them banter between one another. And uh, uh, let's get into some things we didn't like. What are the some things besides the music? Did you I think I think really I kind of like? covered. It. I mean, I didn't really feel a lot of the magic in the musical number, as I felt like uh, maybe Luke Evans' Gaston wasn't quite as. I felt like they they never showed him with the sleeves up. Like he wasn't like he wasn't the burly yeah, the, like the, the giant. Yeah, like I felt like muscles. I feel like Luke was like I'm not really gonna work out for this role, so just shoot me <laughs> with the sleeves down. And like and it didn't you're like yeah. And so like that's part of the reason why Gaston didn't really work as a musical number. Uh, basically, that that's mostly. Yeah, I felt like the. Um, the Stockholm Syndrome aspect was a little bit harder to buy than in a 90-minute animated musical. Um, it's sort of like, she's just like, you know, it, like this movie, you know, it has its own dialogue, it has its own scenes, it has some of its own new songs, but it's still basically the same thing beat for beat. Yeah, it is. Um, and it's just sort of like she still is like, oh, but now he's kind, and uh, but he, he, he also kidnapped me, and that's never really addressed. Like He never really apologizes but or says, like, that was a movie, bad thing to do. Actually, this movie develops their relationship <laughs> a little differently than what was perceived in the original anime feature, and I actually like that. There's a couple new things in there that where they found common ground that actually like each other about mm -hmm. certain things, and even getting to know each other a little bit more, mm -hmm. I think, helped out a little bit more. Uh, a couple things I didn't like was yes there's a couple things like there's certain lines i'm not gonna spoil anything but like, it is beat for beat for the original but there are certain lines in the anime feature that are so iconic that one character would say to another that you just like you wanted to hear in this movie especially for 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 a dramatic effect and they didn't use they didn't utilize those because they were being let's just pull it out they're being nostalgic with this they were doing the beat for beat of the original which is great and it gave you what you wanted but there for me to have more of the dramatic effect especially towards the end you, there's certain lines that needed to be said that weren't said, and I, and I wanted to hear them, and it actually would have helped make it a better story for me. I already brought up Luke Evans. That's a, kind of its own thing. I would, he did great, but like I said, he the character wasn't what original Gaston was. Yeah. And other than that, that's really all I had. There's just certain things, the decision-making of the director, even there were certain shots that could have been close-ups on the face for more dramatic effect in certain, in certain sections. But he's, I keep I kind of dogging him, but he did do a great job. I, I'm going to go with my overalls. I can recommend this to you. This is something you need to see in the theaters for sure to help you recapture the magic, especially if you loved the original anime feature like I do. It will help you. It'll help for me. It'll help you refill the ma uh, refill the magic of the film. Maybe not the musical numbers, but in <laughs> certain sections. I, yeah. But not, not the not the singing. But there's certain sections in the musical numbers that really help you feel the magic still. Yeah. Um, other than that, yes, go check this out. This is great. It has this couple of small moments. Is it better than the original? No. Not by a long shot, but it still helps you. It gives you what you wanted to see. You wanted to see this in live action on the screen. It's like it's, yeah, it's kind of like magic it's, and you got it. It's kind of like the Harry Potter movies in the books, like, like ironically, mm -hmm. uh, or any film adaptation of book. You're gonna say the book is better, but it's still nice to have that it is. that it's, version of it that you can. Oh, that's what it looks like in real life. Yeah, uh, I thought. You. Yeah, I the overall thoughts. Uh, good movie. Weak musical numbers. Some weak characters. I didn't say Mrs. Potts was actually probably the weakest version that they mm. that alternated and just didn't work well uh, for various reasons. I don't I like but at any good. at any rate, uh, good movie. Uh, maybe I'm gonna give it an eight out of ten, but I don't know if I'm as enthusiastic a recommendation still as him. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's 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 Beauty and the Beast. I mean, you don't need us to tell you to go see this movie. Made this movie made four hundred million dollars opening weekend worldwide. This movie is like it doesn't need you to go see Powerhouse. it. So you <laughs> still go see it. <laughs> um, so yeah. 
Yeah. I guess that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it for us. All right, those that'll do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. What did you think of Being the Beast if you have seen it? Leave your comments in the section below. And without spoiling anything, what did you like about the film? Give your and money you to did, Disney. What didn't you not like the film? <laughs> Give it all to Disney. Uh, and if you have not seen it yet, what do you look most looking forward to? Tell us, let us know. Also, if you like what you're watching, please click like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can see more of our various content in the future. I'm Josh Williams. And I'm Ryan Murphy. And thanks for keeping it real. With real time.